leading us in music today and in prayer. Leading us in prayer, Bob. Appreciate that. Part of our worship. Turn with me in your Bibles, Luke chapter 2. I've been trying to use all the different passages. I won't get to the Magi, probably, this year. I used to do a message on the Magi, and, uh, but I'm leaning towards shepherds lately. I like shepherds. You'll hear about shepherds again, too, since I didn't get to see the whole event last Christmas Eve, and then I added some reading, too, about uh, the shepherds and some different information for Christmas Eve service. So. <clears throat> Let's uh, go ahead and read that passage in Luke chapter 2 again. Should be familiar, but let's read it. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. Verse 10. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news, great joy, which will be for all of you people, for all the people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among you, among men with whom he is pleased. And when the angels had uh, gone away from there in, into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about the child. And all, the, all who heard it wondered at the things which were uh, told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back, glorifying, praising God for all that they had heard and had seen, just as they had been told. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We take it as your truth, your, our understanding of how this took place. The shepherds were told out in the fields that a Savior was born for them. And Lord, born for all of us. And we just, we also have to receive him personally too. Lord, I just pray that each one of us knows our Lord and Savior Jesus in their hearts and know him as Savior as their life. And we just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, for quite a few years, read this, this uh, passage. Verse 11. Verse 11 had me amazed in my office for quite a while. Uh, I had read that scripture. There's three words there. Verse 11. Born for you. Born for you. For many years I had read uh, another translation that says, Born unto you. But the New American Standard says, Born for you. And that just took me into... I have a personal Savior. The words say, born for you. For some reason, it struck me that this is a very personal event. And even for the shepherds. A personal event for the shepherds. And a personal event for you. He was born for you. Uh, I looked up some other ones. The King James Version says, born to you. And the English Version says, your Savior was born and uh, but I uh, I just find this so personal when it says born for you. So verse 11 really struck me in my office this week. 
So we've had an amazing announcement to Mary. The first week I started, we had a shocking plan to Joseph, and then we had an out-in-the-wild message for the shepherds to share. And the shepherds did a few things, and there's four things that we're going to look at today. The first thing that the shepherds did is they perceived Christ. The second thing they did was pursue Christ. And the third thing is they proclaimed Christ. And the fourth thing is they praised Christ in these 12 verses. So I got a little story. This is sometimes happens in our life, but we need to make sure that we do not allow this to happen with Christmas in our lives. This took place in uh, New York City, or Washington, D.C. On January 12, uh, 2015, as the day, a young man named Joshua Bell entered a subway station and in Washington, D.C., and he was dressed in a long sleeve t-shirt and jeans, just normally dressed. He found a nice place and took out his violin from its case. And then he placed the case on the ground in front of him. Uh, that way, whoever was passing by could throw donations uh, if they wished. And so for the next 45 minutes to an hour, Joshua Bell played on his violin. They figured between 1,500 to 2,000 people passed directly by him. And uh, most of them did not pay any attention to him at all. Most of them were too busy going here and there to even notice. After he finished playing, he collected about $32. So for an hour's work, he uh, collected about $32. He figured that 27 people actually stopped long enough uh, to listen a while and actually give him a donation. There's more to the story, though. Joshua Bell was actually a world-renowned violinist, and just three days prior to that, he played at a sold-out audience at the Boston Symphony Hall. The price of the ticket started at $100. The violin that he was using in the subway was, at that time, worth over $3 million, and most of the people didn't even notice him. And most of them were too busy going in here and there to notice him. What had been offered to them was available to them free to hear. Donations if they wanted. But they were there to receive. Sometimes our Lord and Savior in the season were too busy going here and there, that we don't even realize what we've been offered. We need to make sure. Most people, Christmas time can become crazy. It can become hectic. Too many things on the schedule. It becomes exhausting. Even a lot of people become even frustrated and even wish the season was over. They really do. And that is not, that is not what Christmas is about to sit down and realize what is being offered. This is kind of a, a small example of sometimes what we have right in front of us. And uh, the Lord is there with us always. And he's, he's saying, I have everything to offer you. So we need to make sure that we uh, pay attention to our Lord. In the fields, in the, in the region, out in the if you were to go find shepherds here, it might be uh, up back here between uh, Manderson and the Olson's house. There's shepherds out there sometimes. They're actually out there. And lots of sheep. This is where the angels went. Out in the wild. It might be somewhere on the edge of the mountain. It just matters what time of the year you would uh, go looking. But I'd like to talk about the shepherds. You see... They didn't miss the message of Christmas at all. They, and that is because they did these things. They paid attention, and they perceived, they pursued, they proclaimed, and they uh, praised the Lord, just like they would normally do to when they heard a message like that. Let's look at uh, what is perceive. Perceive is to become aware of or allow yourself to become aware of, to observe or to know, to understand, to listen, uh, 
to experience. They experience that moment. If you were to go out into uh, the community, how would, uh, who would you go to so that you could get a message out? Something that the Lord's been born. You could go to churches out in the community, and they could announce it on Sunday morning. But even churches aren't full like they used to be. You could uh, <clears throat> go to the local coffee shop, but it might get mixed in with the other information that's out there. And I was thinking uh, when you, uh, between 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock, out in front of the post office is pretty busy. <laughs> Especially, you know, they're pretty, that's pretty precious time. You better not park there very long, some towns, right? But where would you go? Where would you go? Well, they just went out in the community. Whoever was there, they announced it. And they, they understood what the angel had told them. So they started in the pasture. And whoever they ran into on the way into town, they just kept telling people. And they announced that a Savior was born unto them. First-hand experience. They had it. First-hand knowledge. Nobody else shared this yet. You ever wondered why God sent a special announcement to the shepherds? I mean, he could have uh, sent an angel to the temple uh, that the Lord was coming, that the priests would have known. He could have uh, sent to political leaders, told them that the birth of a baby was coming and he would be the savior. But he didn't. He didn't send it to the rich and powerful. He sent the message to shepherds who were out in their fields watching sheep and why would he do that I think it's because the Bible over and over identifies Jesus also as a shepherd and also as a lamb John 10 11 says I am the good shepherd the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep and also in John 10 14 it says I am the good shepherd and I know my own, and my own know me. Who better to share a message? And also David, think of David. He was always referring to the Lord as the shepherd, the good shepherd. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul and he guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness, loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Peter talks about the day when the chief shepherd shall appear. When he writes in 1 Peter 5, 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. And then also John the Baptist, which is probably the one that we know or remember most often about the Lamb. In John 1.29 it says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Shepherds. Who better to witness the birth of a Lamb than shepherds themselves, right? And they had seen many of other lambs born, but nothing like this Lamb. Nothing like this one. He was different, he was special, and he was born to take away the sins of the world. And he was born for you is what it says in verse 11 that personalized it born for you who better they pursued Christ that's the second one and that's to seek they examined they investigated they explored they looked unto Bible really doesn't say how long the angels stuck around but the Bible does say that when they left 
the shepherd said, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go straight to Bethlehem and then see this thing that has been born, which the Lord has made known to us, according to Luke 2.15. Savior born for us personally. The Message Bible says, let's go over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. Somebody today might say, dudes, let's hurry up. Let's go see what's happening. That might be today's translation. But, you know, it might be in Spanish or it might be in Peruvian around here. Because there's a lot of Peruvian shepherds that herd sheep in this area. Think about that. The Bible does not tell us how long it took for the shepherds to find Jesus. But I can tell you this. They did not hesitate. They went straight to Bethlehem. They did not procrastinate. They went as quickly as they could to see what truly was going on, this message that they had been given. They wanted to see it for real. It wasn't a dream. It was for real. No hallucination. It wasn't a fairy tale. It was a real deal. They found a baby lying in a manger, just like they had been told. Just like they had been told. Wrapped in swaddling cloths. Guess what? Jesus still wants to be found today. He doesn't want you to hesitate. He doesn't want you to procrastinate. He wants you to find him. Jesus said, Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. A lot of people think that God plays hide-and-seek, but he does not play games. He wants to be found. He really does. But he wants you to be serious, just like the shepherds were. Let's go now, is what they had in their heart. Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And when you feel that tug, you know you need to look. You need to go. You need to find the Lord. The shepherds did not just stay in their fields looking at their sheep. They went and pursued Christ, and they found him, and we can too. And he offers his presence in our life. But we do have to make an effort. We do have to pursue him. We need to proclaim him. That's the next thing they did. They proclaimed him. So I looked that up. Webster is easy to understand. Announce publicly. Announce publicly. That's what they went and did. And we should have no problem doing the same. We really shouldn't. We really shouldn't. We should take this time of year and not be quiet. We need to share his name. Because that's why, really, the things that are going on, the lights and all the stuff that gets put up, the real reason, the main reason for that to happen is that Christ was born. I don't know how all it got attached. It's a celebration. But for the real purpose of all of it, it's that Christ was born for us as a Savior. I would have loved to have been there and listened the conversation between Shepherd, Mary, and Joseph. We had these angels come, and they, uh, they were singing, and there was lights, and things were going on, and they told us, hey, there's going to be a baby here. Can you imagine what that conversation was like? Look what it says in the scriptures. Suddenly there appeared angels, multitudes of heavenly hosts, praising and uh, singing, saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Can you imagine that first moment? I'm sure there were for fearful, and the angel said, don't fear, I have good news. We should do the same thing. We should share good news with those who need to hear it. That's exactly what Christmas is about. Don't let other things get mixed up 
in your Christmas. Christ is the center. Christ is the very center. Max Lucado wrote this. He says, the announcement went to the shepherds. They, uh, they didn't ask God if he was sure he knew what he was doing. Had he went to, had the angels went to theologians, they probably would have referred to their commentaries. If they had went to uh, <clears throat> the elite, they would have looked around to see if anyone else was watching. If they had gone to the successful, they would have looked at their calendar first to, to see if they could fit it in. But they went to the shepherds who said, let's go now. Let's go now. He didn't go to men who had reputations to protect or an axe to grind or a ladder to climb. He went to men who just trusted that God knew what he was doing. And when the angel said, there is for you a Savior born, you'll find him this way, wrapped in cloths and sleeping in a feed trough made for animals. They believed him. They believed him. And that's where we, uh, they proclaimed him. They believed. And the last thing they did is they praised Christ. The shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as they had been told. Luke 2.20 it says. Why did the shepherds praise God? Because God had sent the greatest gift of all, his son. God proved to them that he was real and that his promises are true. This was a promise. This was a promise that a Messiah would come. And the shepherds' lives were changed forever because they had an encounter with Christ. And your life should be changed too. It should be. We talked about it last week, that if you have accepted Christ, there should be no doubt in your life. There should be no doubt. They perceived Christ, they pursued Christ, they proclaimed him, and they now are praising Christ, and their lives were changed. So I ask you that. Have you encountered Christ? And has your life changed? It should. So in your experience, I know I always say this, does the Christmas story still amaze you? I've asked this before, of how it all worked, God's plan. A savior came through a, a baby. Does it amaze you still? Maybe something has confused you with what takes place at Christmas time. But we need to center Christ in the middle of our Christmas and keep him there and guard that. Make sure that when you say that you celebrate Christmas, it really means you're celebrating the birth of Christ. Not just things that you get, but that you have Savior that has been given to you. Amen? Amen? Perceive him. Pursue him. Proclaim him. And then praise him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your, your message of how our Savior was given to us. Lord, I pray that we would share that with others. That we would share who Jesus is share what Jesus has come for and that's for our hearts so he could cleanse us pure white as snow it says in the scriptures and then Lord I just pray that we would just lift up your name in return showing you how much we appreciate and love you Lord, I just pray that each and every individual here 
understands exactly what it truly means when we say we celebrate Christmas. We praise you, we thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen.